best of times. We are starting with the Very Naughty Hens. The Very Naughty Hens. My own dear little hens, you have scratched up all my garden, my garden that I planted and made to look so neat. Oh, naughty, naughty hens, you have caused my heart to harden, and tomorrow I will surely tie up all your, up all your little feet. Hmm. Papa's welcome. One night, when the train came in, a very magnificent team dashed down from the house over the lawn to meet Mr. Lee as he came up from the station. Tra-lira-lira, -lira, the horn blew its sweet wild notes in and out among the trees, and in a minute more, Mr. Lee saw the gay turnout come in sight. Was not that a nice way to go to the station to meet Papa? Writing a letter to Papa. All around the lock, one. One wee little woman only one year old, blue eyes bright and merry, curl, curly locks of gold, everybody's princess, everybody's pet, for a thon, throne so cozy on a pillow set. Sister brings, in, brings her playthings, brother brings her books, mother saves to please her, all her sweetest looks, loves and hugs and kisses, more than can be told, has this little woman only one year old. Two. Two tiny tubs with suds abrim, two washerwomen, neat and trim. One dips and rinses, rubs and rings, as she washes, gaily sings. But what has lazy Dana done? Dinah, Dana. Her morning work has not begun. Two tubs abrim with foam and froth, one little maid to use them both. Three. Three thirsty thistles beside the stone wall, so tired of waiting for showers to fall. Dear little Dickie was passing the spot and brought in a hurry his watering pot. Though it was heavy, little he cared. I'm a shower, he shouted in glee. Three thirsty thistles, they feel the cool rain. Thanks to you, Dickie, we are happy again. Four. Four funny fans had Maud and May to cool the air one summer day. A palm leaf broad, a feather fan, and one that came from far Japan. And for the fourth, May took her hat and made a fine big fan of that. And so, and then so, strong a breeze they had, and then so strong a breeze had they, they played, it was a winter day. Five, five fairy fingers, all dimpled and white, busily playing the needles so bright. One wears a thimble, a cap for his head, while gaily he others pull out the long thread. Five fairy fingers work very fast and hold up the treasure, finished at last. No matter how crooked the small stitches are, she knows the pincushion will please dear Papa. Six. Six silver spoons, all bright and nice. Six saucers full of orange ice. Six little napkins white as snow, six merry maids all in a row. The silver spoons make many trips from heaping plates to rosy lips. And when they're empty as before, six maids are ready for some more. Seven. Seven shining shells we gathered on the shore. And if we could have stayed, we might have got some more. We played and played all day, as happy as could be. And when the sun went down, they called us in to tea. We made a mound of sand and put the shells inside. Don't touch our pretty things, you little waves, we cried. Oh, naughty, naughty waves, we hurried back next day. And mound and shells and all had vanished quite away. Eight. 
Eight eager elves flew high and far to catch the sparkle of a star. One on butterflies they rode, or bees, or floated softly on the breeze. But long before they reached the sky, a thundercloud came sailing by, and blown with wind and wet with rain, eight eager, eager elves flew down again. Nine. Nine nodding nosegays, fresh and fine. What shall I choose, said Tom, for mine? He looked at the roses, red and white, at lilies fair, at pansies bright. At last he chose a fine bouquet and proudly bore his flowers away. But I have heard, I guess it's true, he gave them all to little Prue. Ten. There were ten tin trumpets. There were ten small boys and ten steel houses that then were full of noise. And the ten steel houses then were full of noise. How they roused the mothers, grandmas too, perhaps from their books and sewing, sewing, from their peaceful naps, how they waked the babies, how they scar scared the cats, how they shirked and whistled tunes in sharps and flats. But at last the racket stopped at set of sun, for the trumpets ten were broken, every one. Eleven. Eleven elastic eels this fisher boy has caught, a splendid basketful. To carry home, he thought. His sister standing by thinks Johnny very wise and watches all he does with round, admiring eyes. But when he starts for home, he finds too late, alas, there's not a single eel lies in the long, wet grass. The naughty, squirming things, the truth is very plain, have wiggled to the edge and tumbled in again. Twelve. Twelve twirling tops, as light as air, two children gay with streaming hair. So many times the tops they've spun, to spin themselves they have begun. Round go the tops, a dizzy whirl, round go the flying boy and girl, till who can see boy, girl, or top? I wonder if they'll ever stop. on New Year's morning. Happy New Year, baby brother, a year all new, baby and full of pretty things, snowflakes, bluebirds and yellowbirds, apple blossoms and roses, rainbows and strawberries and rides, in a white world rides, in green world rides, in a red and gold world, that's what Happy New Year means, you dear little baby brother. Baby's Sermon The Doll Surgeons Rose Jenny's Dolls Once there was a little girl and she had a large family of dolls and loved them dearly every one. She was five years old and her name was Rose Jenny. Dr. George Rose Jenny had a deal of sickness in her family. There were measles and mumps and scarletina and coughs among her dolls all the time. Besides accidents, oh, horrid accidents, broken legs and arms, and at one time there were two cases of broken necks so that the heads came quite off. They were a good-natured lot of dolls, and the heads would lie there on the floor and smile just as sweetly as ever. Her brother George gave the dolls medicine every day. That was George's play bus business to Dr. Dolls. But the bones would not grow together, and their sawdust kept ebbing, ebbing away at the hospital. But one day, Rose Jenny burst into the house with a great scream of joy. She gathered her dolls into her apron and fled. Sarah Ann and Maud have opened a hospital to cure dolls. She shouted to her back to her mother, so they had. Sarah Ann and Maud could sew and cut and glue and mend. They made Rose Jenny's dolls as good as new. They charged real money for it, and they had a little sign in the window. Sarah Ann and Maud's dolls and Maud doll surgeons, and all the little girls on that street had their dolls cured at their hospital. I wish there was a doll surgeon on our street, don't you, dearie? The doll surgeons at work.
Hi-ho, hi-ho, and around we go. All girls and boys have not all the joys that we rabbits know. Hi-ho, and hi-ho, furry folks, folks can prance, furry folks can dance. Hi-ho, and hi-ho, and around we go. Three Rogues Oh, what shall I do with these three little folks? So full of their fun, so full of their jokes. They chatter like squirrels. Chirp and nip. Hark, like Bob, Bobo, Bobo Lynx whistle, like terriers bark. Now here they go racing, hurrah and pell-mell. Now where are they hiding, can anyone tell? See a prize, the prairie pirate fairies on the distant mermaid sea. Towed to port our chubby baby. He must now their captive be. Little did they know our baby, or what makes his cheeks so round. Out of house and home he'll eat them. Back they'll bring him, I'll be bound. Little Peter Plum, Plum Cake's Adventure. Naughty Peter Plum Cake. What did Little Peter do, and why is his name Plum Cake? Little Peter tried to do everything that came to his head, and he was called Plum Cake. Well, just because he was sweet as sugar and spice and all things nice. Well, one day, this delicious child sat down by a pail and drew off his little wool socks and laid them in the water and played with them. When Miss Plumcake came in, she said, Oh, naughty, naughty Peter Plumcake. She caught him up and ran with him into another room and put on his leather shoes. But quick as she was not looking, he toddled back to his pail and soon had his leather shoes in the water and his stockings too. Swish, splash. Latter giggle. Oh, what fun! There were no dry shoes this time. Miss Plumcake set the two damp, rosy legs into Father Plumcake's tall boots. But at the very first step, down went Peter on his nose. He kicked off the mother's shoes. He kicked off the sister's shoes, too. He said, Petey won't not. So Miss Plumcake rolled him in a blanket and laid him in his crib and said to him, Go to sleep till your shoes are dry, naughty one. Peter lay still a minute and looked at the row of shoes. Then he turned over and things began to happen. A tall fairy came in. She sat down before him and said, Put your foot in my lap. He put his foot up and the tall fairy drew shoe after shoe out of her magic pocket and flung them all away. Lovely little knit socks of blue, pink, scarlet, and white. Slippers of chamois with flowers broidered on the to toes. Trim little boots with silver buttons. She flung them all aside. Wet as sop, she said. Said she, you will have to wear boot boats. You'll have to wear boats. Then she pulled out some queer wooden shoes from Dutchland on Peter's feet. And then she put some queer wooden shoes from Dutchland on Peter's feet. They did look like boats, and they hurt his rosy toes. P.T. won't not wear boats, he screamed, and set up in his crib. There was his foot in his mother's warm hand, and she was drawing on his soft, dry wool shoe. There was no tall fairy, no magic pocket, and no wooden, no magic pocket, no wooden shoes. The shoe, dream shoes. In a row. Too big for Peter. Peter's leather shoes and wool shoes. Naughty Peter Plum Cake. What does that mean? What do you mean? Naughty. Naughty? Yes. What does that mean? Bad. Bad? Mm hmm. He's being disobedient, not listening, mm. getting into trouble. But he was good. He was just playing. Was playing. Wanted to put his shoes in the water and play with them. Splish, splash, splish, splash. And looked like fun. 
Oh, that's so dumb. <laughs> Why is that dumb? <laughs> well, should we read this story tomorrow? Yes, we could. Okay, so, or sometime soon. Baby Regetta. We're not going to 